Hello and welcome to this week's Script Case video. My name is Jamie Oates and I am your host. In the previous video, I had kind of left you all with this shoelace demonstration slash integration with Script Case. And at the time, it was a very difficult time for myself. And of course, it was probably the shortest video and webinar we've done so far. So I, I want to try and make that up to you all in this video. So what we're going to do is we're going to customize this just a little further. And with that, I was showing you, first of all, some of the powerful features or capabilities of Script Case. And at the same time, once we have completed that, we will then be looking at deploying our applications. And deployment is, of course, a very important topic, and it is, in fact, the main topic of today. But of course, for that, to deploy something, we need a project. And for that, I'd rather pre-use or reuse the, yes, reuse the project from the last video and go ahead and make some changes here, adjustments, and of course, some improvements with some of the features that we have available within Script Case. Okay, so previously we had created four basic applications. And you can only see two applications here. We have here a dashboard application or a blank application, should I say, because that's what this really is. It's a blank application. And we have here a menu application at the top. We had added true lace by adding a little sliding uh, dock here on the side. We had also added the avatar, uh, a logo, and then within our blank application, we have here also some shoelace components, which we wanted to start using in some sort of capacity. Now we had also within Scriptcase developed or created here two extra applications. We had here the grid products. So if we open that up and go ahead and run that, we can have a quick look at that and see where we left that off. And for the grid application, where well, we did do a little more, we styled the grid application a little more, we added some of the fields, we added then also the objects here, as well as an edit button here on the side, which then takes us to the form and so forth. And that is pretty much where I had left you in the last video. So let's have a quick look here and check out some of the things that first of all we can improve. So within the menu application, we can improve a few things here because really the idea of this was actually to have an extra menu. So what I'm going to do is I will start off by creating that straight away. So if I zoom in here a little bit and then we can see all of these buttons and options a little better. Okay, so I'll start off by creating a new application. And with the new application, again, I will call it a menu application. And this time I'll call it menu unders uh, underscore and I'll call it the side menu. So menu underscore side. And that will then become the main menu for our applications within this project. So here straight away, I could insert the items that I want, or I can remove them, or make it even easier with larger projects, I can click the import, and then the import window will open. And from here, I can then select the applications I want to display here. So in this case, I really just want to display the grid products. So I will import that. And then I can go ahead and adjust the title that I have here. And for the menu, I can also add icons. And using Font Awesome, I can then add Font Awesome icons here. So if I add a product list here. I want to add like a list icon. There we go, like a nice list icon. And that is then displayed. And then I also want to change the theme that we have available here. But really, for this menu, I want to change it from horizontal to vertical. So it's along the left-hand side of the screen. So if I go ahead and run that now, that should then be displayed along the left-hand side here. And we have then here our menu buttons. Now there are many, many uh, menu themes to choose from. Some of the really nice ones are hidden away down the bottom here. Uh, for instance, the block blue. And of course, some of the others are then all depending on your choice and preference for your application, which you can also customize. Now, as you see, this one here is only for horizontal, so I can have to move move away from these ones because otherwise it resets it to horizontal and then the menu to horizontal also as I have now. So I need to make sure I choose one which is horizontal and vertical. And I can scroll down. I have some public ones here which have been saved and stored by all of the previous users or uh, projects that I have basically imported. You can see that I have a, a great deal many of them. So I better just scroll back up again 
and come back up here to the top and just import one of the default horizontal and vertical menus. So here I will then choose here the Android Black. I think I'll stick with the Android Black. Run that one. And then that will be horizontal right now. I need to change it again to vertical. And then it will change to a vertical menu. Okay, just like that. Okay, now we could further customize the menu if we wanted to, but for now I'm going to leave it as it is. And what I want to then do is run this menu when I run the main menu. So if I run this first menu, instead of running this blank page, it will run this side menu. So now I come here to settings, scroll down to the bottom, and here we had already set the default application to one application and blank. And that we now want to change to menu underscore side. Now I can then go ahead and save that. And then now here within menu underscore side, back in settings, I can set this one again as one application. Scroll down and add the blank application or our dashboard application or any other application that we want to actually have displayed there. Okay, so we have then the menu side. If I go ahead and run that, we can see we have our menu side with our blank dashboard there now. And if I go ahead and run the main menu, we then have the main menu plus the side menu and our blank application or dashboard or whatever details, grid forms that we want to have displayed there. Okay, so one of the main questions that we generally have within Scriptcase is how do we import other applications? And it is a very simple with PHP, you have the PHP include command. So here within our blank application, for instance, I had added some basic content. We have here our basic HTML page. So if I run that quickly, we can have a quick look at that. And there we have then the shoelace components we had added into this page. So we can go ahead and customize this a little more. I had added or included loads here, which are commented out. So I'm going to remove them this time. And here also, for our samples, here we have our blocks. So there I also have a sample also of that. I will remove that also. And then we have one link. Now I only need one of these and I'm going to go ahead then and remove all of the others. Because basically what we want to do is repeat this as many times as there is available or the availability of it within our application. So at the top here of my blank application, I can choose here, selecting fields from another table, and I'll just remove that at the top. I'm also going to remove here the if is it. I don't want that now. And then I can make further adjustments here if I wanted to, which we will do in a few moments. So then here, for instance, I could then select various options from our database tables. So here we have our select, and let me check then first of all the database table. And I have here then the database DB samples, which we had then used. And we had previously used, for instance, here, the products. So let's go ahead and use the same table again. So I want to select here the products table. So let's come back here to our selection from products. And then let's have a look what we want to, which fields we want to select there. So we have here the product name and we have uh, a tag here discontinued so we can use that so if zero or one so it's available or not and we can then display the product name and of course any other details that we wanted to so for now i'm just going to display one or two details here and that will then suffice so the main idea here is product id and that is then what i want to use here so where product id we don't want product ID here, do we? We actually want discontinued. So where discontinued, where discontinued, and that was a one or a two or zero or one. So let's set that as one, zero. Uh, so not being discontinued one, I would imagine is discontinued. And here we want then the product title, I believe it was. Check it again for product name. So product name, and I'll just remove this field. And then basically at the bottom here, we have here our section, and there's one adjustment here I do want to change. And at the moment we have here a record set, I want to change that to a data set, okay? So that's important, I'll save that for now. 
And then scroll down the bottom here, we have here our block here. So I want to start using PHP here. And for that, I need to then add then our PHP uh, open tag, and then also close our PHP so that we, we are basically encompassing here our A tag or our element, our pulse element, our uh, uh, box element, group list element that we have here that we added. Okay, and basically we want to base repeat this for every product that has not been discontinued. So we have, we have then a complete list of all of our products in that listing. So just as an example, okay? So basically what we want to do then is add here a, I went too far there, a for each statement. So we go for each, and then we can add here uh, some brackets. So we need to add brackets there first of all. And then within that, we can then say, for each DS, which is our data set, as, okay, and then we can apply a name or a variable to that, and we can then call it then, for instance, product list, okay, so I'm going to give it then a high a uppercase L there, and then I'm going to open that up again. And then if I close that with our curly brackets, then we can loop within this object or within this component here, we can then loop our elements. And we really want to do that here with our um, code here. So basically, I'm going to go ahead and remove that because I had copied it already. So I have it copied and then I can paste that within the for each or just uh, adjust the curly bracket, however you please. Now within that, again, notice we are, of course, using HTML within this um, list. So I need to close again my PHP. And at the bottom here, at the end of the HTML, I need to open that up again because we are having a curly bracket here, which is again concluding our PHP statement here. Okay, so within that, for every product list item, this will basically loop now. So if I go ahead and click Run, let's go ahead and check that. And it should loop then for every single product we have within our um, product list. And of course, we can make further adjustments to that so it actually displays articles or pretty much anything else. Now, of course, you may be asking, okay, how do I then display the title of our object or the content or whatever it is? So we have here within our element, our, our HTML text, so our basic text that we have there. So that was there, sample, and that would then display here, sample, sample, sample all the time. And then that basically, we can then come in here again, open and close our PHP, okay? So we need to open and close a PHP again. And then within that, we can then echo, and we want to then echo the variable that we have created here, which is then product list, so I'll copy product list, place product list in there, and then because we have then multiple options or multiple um, identities that we are receiving from there, so we need to add then our hard brackets and then we can target the first item. So if I add here, which I have here at the moment, product name, then I reference zero. And if I would, for instance, go comma uh, product description, then the number would increase to one or two or three, depending on whichever, after whichever comma that is. Now, at the end of our product list um, array, basically, that has been created, we then need to close that off. So we finish our PHP. Okay, so that is very simple. And just like that, it will then add uh, the title of every single item in there. And if I replace that with each of the samples and then go ahead and run that again, we will then see the product name displayed over and over and over again for each of the products, which is really, really cool and really simple to achieve within script case. Because again, we used here one of the examples and very easily adjusted the code for each and created our own little loop. Now you can do lots of little things like that with the macros, examples, and so forth. For instance, you could define the uh, theme for a user within a backend settings table and on login every time it checks that table and loads the correct theme specified by that user instead of having it selected within the top menu. But that is of course another story. So we basically added here uh, a loop in here and we have here then also our extra tabs and there I really wanted to include basically the 
grid that we had created now it's not going to fit it is going to look ugly okay but it's really for the purpose of showing how easy it is to import other applications within script case so i'll add the php include statement here and then I'll add some brackets and finalize our statement. And then within that, I then need to specify the path to the application that I want. Now, our applications within script case, they are called, as, as our application names are defined here, we have them displayed, okay? But that is not the correct name that you would then want to assign because that is essentially a folder name that would be created on deployment, which we'll have a look at shortly. Okay, so in this example, we have here our grid products, okay? So we really want to basically define that. So here, back here in blank, I could then come here with an hour include. So I want to go back one folder because we are initially within the blank application folder. And then I want to specify grid products forward slash index dot php and the index dot php is always the initial application or the application that is generated or displays your grid products or your form products for instance okay so that is then the complete path that we then need to include and if i then go ahead and run that application we can see then an error message has applied so we need to actually go ahead and check that so i for sure made a slight error there and of course, when I come back here to the blank application, we left out our hyphens. So let's go ahead and add those to make sure it understands that this is a path. And then if I run that blank application again, it will then go ahead and display our grid application also here within this shoelace component that I have created a custom dashboard with. And just like that, we can use some of the other amazingly cool features that are available within Scriptcase. Okay, so we need to get to our main topic because, of course, time is getting on, and that is deployment. So let's go ahead and start to deploy this project. So we choose up here the, or hover over the project option in the top menu, and then we come down here to deploy. And then clicking on deploy, it will begin the deployment process. Now we can cancel out of this at any time, and it will remove your settings and so forth. In fact, I lie there because it now stores some of your settings if you have applied them during the process. But in general, you can at any point cancel this or click here on the home and exit out of this if you wanted to. So the first screen we have for deployment is the selection of our applications. So we have the choice of all applications or select applications. And if I go all applications and click next, it will take us to the applications deployment window. Now you see there is no back button here now. So I'm going to go back to home and exit out of this as I just explained and then come back to project and deploy once again and then this time select applications. So if I go ahead and click next, I can now choose the applications that I want to deploy. So this is ideal for updating your platforms or projects. In those cases, you may have made adjustments or changes to grid products and form products, and those will be then the only applications that you want to deploy from your project. In this case, I have it organized by type. I can also organize by folder, which in some cases for larger projects is for sure much easier to choose and find the applications that you have been working on. Okay, so in this case, I do actually want all applications. So I will go ahead and choose all of them and then click next. Then when we come to the applications deployment screen, we have then the option for a typical or recommended deployment or the advanced deployment. And the difference between the two is within the typical deployment, script case will deploy its applications in a specific way. So take this as an example. We have a, script, a typical script case deployment here with all of our applications. And at the top here, you have the underscore lib. And this is then the default folder or the file path for all of the default uh, deployed uh, files from script case. For instance, we have here the file folder, which contains then the documents and images. We have then here also the conf folder, which by default is for the configuration of script case. Okay, so this folder is very important. 
There are other folders here also, such as the temporary folder, the library folder, and the JavaScript folder, the Google Fonts folder. And some of these folders, do check them out because you can also reuse the content or the scripts, images, and so forth that is available with Scriptcase already. So for instance, if I come here to libraries, we have here group libraries, script case libraries, and then project objects in here. Okay, so we have here font awesome, login payment. So you just check around in some of these and you will find scripts that are already available for you to use within script case. Okay, so coming back then to our project deployment, we have then the typical deployment, which then has all the pre-configuration set. And then in the advanced, if we have a quick look at that, we can first of all set a template name. If we have templates already available, then we will have a template to choose from. So in this case, I will choose sample and click next. And this then allows me then also to store the arranged or updated paths that I have then adjusted or included in here. So we have then here script case production folder, script case file folder, image, the temp folder, as well as then the default documents folder for your applications. Now, if you want to make adjustments to these, you can adjust these here right now and then deploy your applications with the uh, adjusted uh, folder locations. You then also choose here the initial application that you want to load. Now, in most cases, that will be your login page. In some cases, that will be your menu application. In others, it may just be a blank or form or grid or whatever it is that you want to display to your end users when they first visit your domain. Okay, so with your initial application set, in our case it is the menu application, and I will leave the default settings as they are. Now I do should also mention up here, we have the option to deploy with the common files. That is the CSS script files, all of the buttons, as well as the CSS files and images that are uh, associated with that all of the images that you have associated with the project and used within your project, as well as any messages and so forth that are required for the project. Now, if you uncheck this, you will not have those files and folders included. Now, typically for updates is when you would then uncheck that box. In our case now, it is our first deployment for this project, so I need to have it checked so that I have all of the very specific basis or application files such as the themes and buttons and everything else already available for the project. In the future, if I update my theme, for instance, or change the buttons or add further images, then I will again want to have this checked so that it again updates and deploys all of those required files from the project that I am working on. Okay, so if I go ahead and click next now, I can then specify my connection name. So here I can actually change then the connection name that I have for this. I'm gonna leave it as con MySQL. It's the typical one. Of course, I could just change it to MySQL or anything else. And if I go ahead and click next, I have then the option to create a zip file with all of the applications. I can generate a tar file, which is again, similar to a zip, it's just a different compression uh, method. We have then also the option to deploy directly on a server directory. So for instance, if I have script case deployed on my local server, like here now, it is on my local machine, I could then, for instance, type then the path that I would have that. And that would then be WAMP64 forward slash www, I believe, and forward slash, and then a folder. So in this case, I called it uh, SC, uh, deployment and forward slash again. So that would then deploy directly to that server folder on my Windows machine. On my server, the folder structure is slightly different. So on my Ubuntu server, the folder, st folder structure is slightly different. So you will want to have to pay attention to that. So if you have script case uh, deployed and running where you are developing on the same server, you can deploy locally on that server where you are developing, which is a really cool feature. We have then also the option to deploy via FTP. So Scriptcase will connect to your domain with FTP, 
and use the username and password that you enter here as well as then the folder path that you have then specified on your hosting environment and script case will then also automatically connect and deploy all of your applications and i can tell you both the ftp and the server directory work really fast and there is also sftp which is a secure version of ftp okay so that also fully works in this case i'm going to go ahead and create a zip file with applications and i'm going to go ahead and click next and then i'm going to wait for the applications to be deployed so for the deployment we need to pay attention that of course it is deploying all of the applications is creating each of the files as well as all of the scripts and everything that is associated to this project compacts it into a zip file which is typically the process that takes a little longer for the environment so when you deploy locally or to a an ftp server the upload time is then your uh, time your extra time that it may take now in general it is really fast so the zip uh, deployment can sometimes take a little longer but at the same time the zip provides you of course a local version which I now download and that I can then use here on my uh, local environment or upload it to anywhere else so then with the deployment complete I then have then the compressed file with all of the deported or deployed should I say applications within this zip file now there we have our underscore lib folder we have then our menu side menu grid products form products blank and index i'm going to close that for now and come back here to the deployment again so i choose to deploy again and there we see i've just been logged out so back here within deploy if i choose again select our well, all applications again this time and I'll choose advanced again and go next. Notice now that I have the template available here and I can choose here the deploy button. So quickly deploy the template defined project. So once I've created the first deployment of a project, I can use an existing template which I had created previously with those specified paths, with the FTP settings, with everything ready for you to deploy it to your specified location, which was previously always a bit of a nightmare, trying to remember the specific paths you had used for a project or trying to, of course, dig up the FTP or SFTP settings you have stored away somewhere and then reapply them to the project. So now that is no longer needed you have that available here and of course you can delete the template and edit the template at any time and there we can then go through all of these specific library folders as well as in the connection and then how we then want to deploy that so again i could choose then the specified server directory and as you see it now stores the server directory of that project which is for sure a great time saver again one of those previous headaches that many of us for sure were pulling our hair out that we had to again remember the specific path or dig up those specific details for deployment so that is no longer needed thanks to one of the you know one of the greatest updates lately that have been applied to script case okay so following through with a deployment depending on if you upload your project via an ftp client use script case for the deployment or however that may be you would essentially always end up with a folder and you would then essentially upload your project into that folder. So whether that be your hosting environment, a local directory as I have here, WAMP64, www and SC deployment. You would basically always grab all of your files or your project and then export them to the folder. So again, I could have done that locally. In this case, I'm going to uh, export them all directly here now you may notice already that i am choosing a larger project here now this the reason why i'm doing this is is because it's got a login page and it looks a little nicer than the other project and also you have more of an idea or basically see that it's the same regardless of the size of your project so i'm going to then go ahead and just drag and drop all of the files and folders from my compressed archive here into the deployed folder 
Of course, at the moment, while that's deploying, I can't make changes to this uh, directory anymore. I can, of course, open up a new Explorer window and continue working if I wanted to. But again, depending on the size of your project, the process time will, of course, vary for the compressed file. Of course, if you have more high res images, more themes attached to your project, more style sheets and so forth, you will, of course, again, increase the size of your project. Now, in general terms, you could probably wait a few seconds to, you know, less than a minute for sure. That is, again, depending on your compressed archive, not really on script case, but again, also dependent on the size of your project mainly. OK, so if you have a small project, the decompression time will be really quickly. Otherwise, as you see in this case, it takes a little longer and I don't have the latest machine now. It's a few years old now. And of course, I should maybe upgrade to have some of the faster speeds available for you know, exporting and so forth. But in general, as you see, it works quite nicely. OK, so once all of the files have been deployed, I can actually choose here. Yes, on um, decompression, overwrite any uh, replicate replicant files so I choose yes to all and that will then copy over any files which are duplicate and then once that's all available the files and folders will then be available within your deployed location or environment so of course if it's in the case of an online environment you will have that then visible within your portal panel as you see many times within some of our other videos So Explorer can, of course, be a little buggy at times. It's a lot of work decompressing a lot of files and then copying them then to the folder. And as you see, Explorer's um, just kind of spinning there for a moment. And before you know it, all of your files and folders will be available there. And you see here, I have here my index folder. I have loads of grids, forms, blank applications, and so forth. So I then go ahead and visit the location again and I have that here and this was then loaded previous to having any files located there and if I F5 the page it then gives me then first of all in the path it says app login but it's given me here the connection options so this is what then happens once you've deployed all your all of your project files whether that be online or locally you will need to then visit the domain or the path where you have the applications deployed and then set up the connection. So from here, I can choose to create a new connection and then Scriptcase has then a password for the back end and it is by default Scriptcase. So I need to enter Scriptcase into the window and then confirm that and then it asks me to add a new password. And I'll just add something in there and I see already it's not matching. That's because of my fat fingers. And once I've added a new password, I can update that. And then with that, I can then always access the back end of Scriptcase. And what I'm doing is I'm just copying the path there. And then I will add that into the video so that you have that there all times. OK, so then within the production environment, we have here the back end of Scriptcase or the back end of the production environment that we have then deployed. And the first thing we have here is then our connection displayed. And I need to click that to set it up. So I start by then choosing the database that I have chosen to develop our project with. In this case, it is MySQL. And then I need to add then the connection details for the database. And for me, that is username root. And I have no password as it is on a WAMP local environment. And then from there, I can click the database name and then choose the database here. And there I have then DB samples. And I need to make sure I remove the password because it will keep it there. Save that. Now, you may have noticed I do have the option also, if I click it again, the option here to test the connection. But notice now also, because I have clicked on it again, it has now created a connection number one so it would actually create a second connection if you click on it again okay so that's very important not to then click on it again thinking oh i've made a mistake or anything you can use here the left hand menu 
click here edit the connection and then you can choose the connection that you would like to edit and from there make then adjustments and again you can test the connection and it will tell you a success and you also have the advanced options which you can then further configure for the project and of course save that here now at any time you can also add new connections if you wanted to you also have options to configure the production environment now this is very important because if you have file upload for instance you will need to make sure that you set here the php zone so do choose the area where you are and then choose that and then you can add any of the further details or adjustments here for your cache temporary files the time to live the server uh, a PDF IP address if you're using a dedicated PDF server and also authentication maps. Now we have API options here on the left hand side also so we can add or include further APIs that we have not already configured within our project so we can add them at any time again later on. We have the option to change our password, view help which then opens up the script case help page and also the option to log out. And with that, it will then take you back to the production environment login page. And at this time, you will still be logged into the back end. So if I adjust the path back to the default domain, which is then SC deployment, I am then left with then the login page ready for the use of our newly deployed project. Okay, so that's just about it for today. Uh, if you want to check out what this trade tracker is all about, check out my Try B page. Uh, there you will actually have some more information on this later on during the week or two, as it's a project that will be launching there and also showing you how to develop these sort of platforms and actually have some really cool use from Scriptcase. So that is something on the side from Scriptcase. And of course, hopefully the guys um, well, you guys will, of course, enjoy having such extra content available to you. Okay, so that's just about it for this week. Hope you enjoy this deployment video and, of course, the updates and additions of the extra features that we have there for the macros and the quick access tools within Scriptcase. Now, do note that you can use those to learn from. Just click some of those buttons and see what happens. And you'll be quite surprised. In some cases, it will really change your view on how to use Scriptcase. So thank you very much for watching this week's video. I hope you enjoyed and until next time.